Hey guys, sorry about that. The camera came on quicker than I was expecting, and my little pop up to tell me I didn't have any sound didn't pop up. That's kind of usually my cue that the camera's on. Anyway, guys, it is good to be here tonight. Today is I'm sort of doing. I'm just looking to see what day it was. Today is uh, Sunday, the 17th of February. That makes it day 48 on our Daily Bread Project 2013. That's one thing, guys, that I I just struggle with is the days of the week. I mean, like, I always know what day it is, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, that kind of deal. But the date, most of the time, I just I just don't hardly ever keep up with that. I had to ask them at church this morning, what is, you know, what is today? Because I always, when we do prayer requests at church, I keep a little a book up there, a little, like a little notebook. And I write the prayer request for, every, you know, every Wednesday night and every Sunday, I write them down. Uh... And I always like to date it, you know, that way we know, because sometimes you have people, like on Wednesday night, will ask, well, did we, uh, did we pray for, you know, I need to request a prayer for this person, did we pray for them Sunday, did I mention that or not, or, you know, so you just kind of write them down, you can keep up with it. So anyway, uh, I had to ask this morning what day it was, because I, I, I said, is it the 17th, 19th, 18th, somewhere through there? They said, yeah, it's the 17th, so. Anyway, that's what I was getting at, but guys, it is good to be here tonight. I need to try to make this video a lot quicker than last night. Uh, matter of fact, I have to. But anyway, guys, uh, you know, normal stuff, I'm, I'm uh, glad to be here tonight. I always am, you know, every day, every day, every day, every night we're live, you know. We, we don't appreciate it all the time. We don't think about it all the time, but, you know, it's the truth. It's a gift from the Lord, so, uh just normal stuff, guys. Pray, keep praying for us. Pray for our business this week. It'll, you know, this last week, it was one of those deals. On paper, it was a real good week. Well, not a real good week. I mean, nothing like up there, like a record breaking week, or you didn't know where near where it was, but it was a decent week. Didn't end up with the money in our pockets that I thought should have been there for that type of week. But I think what happened was we sold a lot of, and I told you guys this the other day, we sold a lot of four-wheeler tires and that, and sold a few car tires. And just to be honest, you don't make any money on tires for your investment. You know, four-wheeler tires now, or ATV tires, are as expensive as car tires. I mean, they're up over 100 bucks a piece now, most of them. So you're spending, let's say, 75 or 80 dollars at least or more of your own money per tire to make 10 or 15. So at the end of the week when you look at your totals here you know you've sold two or three sets of ATV tires let's say or two or three sets maybe in one day or whatever the case may be whatever you're looking at well that's an extra thousand bucks or or twelve hundred bucks in sales you know wow you know but you only made 150 or 200 let's say off those three sets or whatever you know so it's it's kind of misleading the same way with car tires you know uh, i sold a guy a set of uh 16 inch big like for a big diesel pickup truck tires the other day um uh, 650 dollars for two of them uh and i made like uh it was a friend of mine but I made like 50 bucks on the deal. So I had to spend like $600 of my money to make 50. There's just not a lot of profit out there, you know, on tires. And you have to you have to do that. You have to keep your, your profit down on them to sell them. Because number one, tires are so high now. Number two, competition. You know, not only are you competing against all the other tire dealers in the county and in Pike County and everywhere around you, you're competing against TireRack.com and all these places on the internet and and even on like I try to tell people by the time you pay shipping on it to get it here and by the time you pay me or somebody else 15 20 bucks a tire to mount them you're not going to save anything but you cannot get that through people's heads to save their life so I, I about even quit trying to, to tell them so anyway uh, just what I'm getting at I didn't mean to go on a little rant there but what I was just getting at was it was a decent week you know but I need you guys' prayer. You know, just pray that this week will pray that the weather will, will get better. I know it's supposed to be up in the 50s tomorrow. It's in the 20s today. Colder than ice today. 50s tomorrow, but then I think I seen on the Yahoo uh, weather. 50s tomorrow, but then back into like 30s for highs Tuesday. So 
what the rest of the week's going to get, I don't know. But as always, guys, just keep praying for us. Uh, keep praying, like I said, for that that personal, you know, request that I've been giving to you guys. Uh, what else? Oh, uh, John, uh, Jeff, Chance. Uh well, you probably already you've probably already got my answer back on um, your message while ago you sent me, brother. I appreciate anything that you want to do for me. I really do. Words can't describe how much. Uh, I do appreciate that. You know, if you want to do it, so uh, that's fine with me. Go right ahead. Uh, let me see what else. Oh, something I was going to ask you guys. I've been meaning to ask you the last couple of nights. What do you guys think about? I'm, well, I guess all of you guys have got channels. Cause I guess you got to have a channel to have a name and everything. But I don't know if they're at. Maybe some of you guys that don't make videos. I know most of you do. Most of you guys that watch my videos make some videos. But what's the deal with YouTube trying to get everybody to use their real name? You know, about every two or three videos that I put up when I go to upload it, it pops up there wanting desperately for me to switch to my real name or my full name it calls it you know and that's and I've noticed a lot of people have done that uh, now one reason I don't want to do it is everybody knows me by this name you know just like brother uh, Randy down in uh, oh I cannot remember where Randy's at is he in Louisiana I don't know he's somewhere down south Louisiana Alabama I don't remember but anyway I can't even remember the uh, the name of his uh, channel now, but I did. I, I knew it. But what anyway? What I'm getting at? I started getting these emails saying that Randy Williams, I think, is his name, has uploaded a video, and I was like, "Who's that?" So I just I never did. I thought I asked somebody. I don't know. I, I just finally one day I clicked on it, and it was him. I'm like, "Oh, I've, I always watch his videos," but because he had switched names, I didn't know who it was. Uh, he's a pastor of a small church and he he does, you know, Bible reading and praying videos and stuff. Uh, like I said, I'm ashamed that I, if I wasn't on the spot here, I could remember his channel name, his old channel name. But, uh, anyway, that's one reason I don't want to do it. I mean, I don't care to put my real name out there. All you guys that watch my videos know it anyway, but the only thing that gets me to, why is YouTube trying to press that so hard? You know, that's what kind of concerns me. Why do they want everybody's real name? I mean, YouTube has got my real name anyway, Google, because, you know, when they offered me my semi-partner, you know, not a partner, but semi-partner, you know, one of them deals, I didn't get all the other benefits, but they did at least, you know, monetize my videos. I don't do it anymore because I wasn't making enough money to fool with it, but anyway, when you sign up to do all that, they've already got all your information so they can send you the check. But, I just, I don't know, it bothers me that YouTube is wanting everybody's real name so bad. You know, and especially with all this gun stuff going on, I mean, that kind of makes me think, okay. It, I mean, I, and I, I, if I sound like a paranoid, uh, uh, what are they called? Uh, conspiracy theorist or something. I don't mean to. But, you know, who's to say that couldn't be it? That, you know, especially, you know, they're trying to get everybody to switch to their real names. That way the police can just get on there and, well, let's say this guy's making a video that he's got these guns. Let's go find him. I mean, you never know, guys. And, and you know, the way our government's going, that stuff's, that stuff's liable to come. It's liable to happen. We know eventually it's going to, but uh, I'm not going to do it. I mean, unless I absolutely have to, I'm not going to do it. But it just kind of freaks me out. What do you guys think about that? About YouTube wanting everybody to use? I mean, why does it? What does it matter to them? Why do they keep pushing that? Why are they going for through so much effort? I don't know. They're probably playing it. Oh, it's for you. Oh, it's for you. It's so you can. Everybody's been fine for years using usernames. You know, most people are known by usernames. Why are all of a sudden they're wanting you to? Oh, you know, you can you know, use your real name. It just don't make any sense to me. Just like me, guys, like I said, I don't want to sound like a conspiracy theorist. I still think that our government is behind all these shootings. I really do. I think our government is behind these, the shooting at Connecticut. I think if you could ever find it out, and you, you won't, but if you could ever find it out, I think our government, our, our current administration, is behind the majority of these shootings, the bad ones anyway. Like I've said before, 
when we had other president, other administration, you'd have one school shooting or one, you know, mass shooting or, you know, some kind of public shooting every few years. And now, since we've got the biggest gun-hating president we've ever had, you have one every week now. Either people have changed that much that quick, and I know people are evil, don't get me wrong, uh, but I don't see people changing and snapping much, that much that quick all of a sudden. I, I just think it's too big of a coincidence. But anyway, like I said, I don't want to sound like a conspiracy theorist. So, guys, i got to get to reading. I've already been on here long enough to debate. Uh, Revelation chapter 13, starting in verse 16. Here we go. Also, it causes all, both small and great, both rich and poor, both free and slave, to be marked on the right hand of the forehead, so that no one can buy or sell unless he has the mark. That is the name of the beast, or the number of its name. This calls for wisdom. Let the one who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 666. Alright guys, Revelation 14, 1 going on. Then I looked, and behold, on Mount Zion stood the Lamb, and with him 144,000 who had his name, and his father's name written on their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven like the roar of many waters and like the sound of loud thunder. The voice I heard was like the sound of harpists playing on their harps. And they were singing a new song before the throne and before the four living creatures and before the elders. No one could learn the song except the 144,000 who had been redeemed from the earth. It is these who have not defiled themselves with women, for they are virgins. Excuse me, guys. It is these who follow the Lamb wherever He goes. These have been redeemed from mankind as first fruits for God and the Lamb. And in their mouth no lie was found, for they are blameless. Then I saw another angel flying directly overhead with an eternal gospel to proclaim to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation and tribe and language and people. And he said with a loud voice, Fear God and give Him glory, because the hour of His judgment has come, and worship Him who made heaven and earth, the sea, and the springs of water. And guys, that's where we're going to quit. That's around 10 verses. As always, guys, it's been so good to be here tonight. I hope somebody got something out of this. You know, we just got to realize, like I said, uh, kind of going back to what I said about, you know, people, these people with these shooting and stuff. You know, I know we're evil. So what I preached on today was something, and I said this right off the bat, something that, I would say eight out of the ten. You walk into the eight of the ten uh, biggest churches in this country, or biggest churches in the states, or biggest churches probably in your county, whatever. Don't ever preach on this, and that's sin. You know, and that's what I was talking about today. They don't want to. They don't want to touch that. They don't want to touch sin because they want to tell everybody that they either want to go one of two ways. They either want to make everybody think that you're perfect and you don't mess up and all this, you know, or they want to make you believe that, yeah, you sin, you, but you don't have to repent of it. You can do whatever you want. You know, God's not going to convict you of it. He's, you know, he's not going to do anything. And so, so that's the big reason they just they don't even get into the subject card, and that's what I was talking today. You know, I preached on that we are sinful creatures. I mean, that's it. You know, and that's. It's a tough subject to preach on, I'll admit, because you have to let people know that we're sinful creatures, and that we need a Savior, that He's the only one that can take the sin away from us, okay, but you've also got to let people know, because uh, guys, it's a big thing where the devil has always bothered me, you've also got to let people know that even after we're saved, we're still sinful creatures, we're still not perfect, you know, uh, but it's a touchy subject to... to to preach on because if you preach it the wrong way, people get in their mind, well, okay, so you mean I can sin just every day and roll in it and love it and do what I want and it don't matter? No, you know, you got you, no, oh, I'm not saying that. I'm saying you're going to mess up. But when you mess up and you're a child of God, you're going to get convicted of it. When you get convicted of it, you're going to repent of it. When you repent of it, that means you changed your mind about it. You, you, you don't look at it the same as you did. You know you've messed up. And you try everything within you not to do it again. It makes you sick now when you do that same sin that six months ago, let's say, you did and didn't think twice about it. You know, that's the difference. You know, we're still going to let God down. We're still going to mess up. If we're repentant 
and we're following him and we're doing all we can and we're trusting in him to take care of our sin, then he forgives it. But there's a difference in, in, in occasionally sinning. And by occasionally, I, I even mean every day. We're going to sin every day. We're going to do something. We're going to think something. We're going to say something every day that God does not like. That is a sin against God. But if we put our trust in him and, like I said, do what I, like I said, he's able to forgive. If we wallow in it and love it and don't repent of it and just keep loving it and wallowing in it and we're not getting convicted from the inside out, if it doesn't make us sick, if it doesn't make us hurt because we've sinned, then he's not in us, you know. And that's the difference in, in sinning and, and being forgiven for it and not. And the devil tries to, like I said, he does, he's always does me. The devil tries to tear me down. If I do mess up and I sin and I get convicted of it and I feel awful and I repent of it, but see what the devil wants to come in, he wants to come in and start kicking you and saying, you know what? That's it. That's too much. God, God's not going to forgive you anymore. You've done too much. You know, he wants to remind you of those past sins that you've done years ago before you were saved. He tries to remind you of the times when you mess up now. He tries to make you think that God's grace cannot cover it. So that's the reason I try to remind everybody we all mess up. None of us can live perfect. None of us are perfect. Like my grandpa always said, if any of us could be perfect even for one day, and there's some people that claim this, there's some people that claim perfection. They say once we're saved, we're never going to sin again. Jan Boshoff, you know, uh, I can't remember his channel name now. He preached that. Guys, you can't do it. Like I said, my grandpa was a Pentecostal preacher, and he always said that if we could be perfect even for one day, then Jesus wouldn't have had to come and die for us because we could do it. If you could be perfect for one day, you could be perfect for two. If you could be perfect for two, you could be perfect for a week. See what I'm saying? If we could have been perfect, Jesus would not have had to come and die for us. So anyway, guys, I hope you got something out of this. It still ended up being a lot longer than I wanted, but hey, Holy Spirit leads me somewhere I've got to go. Guys, I love you all. Thank you all for being here. Thank all you guys for commenting. Uh, I guess that's about it. Like I said, just keep praying for us, guys. Keep praying for the church. Because uh, I will not be here tomorrow night until I see you guys again. Good night. God bless.